Boo! There it is. <laughs> Welcome to the Scum Team Podcast. Scummies. This is crazy, y'all. I can't believe we're actually doing this finally. Finally. We've been talking about doing this forever. Yeah. So, uh, for everyone, if you already watch my channel, then you know who we are mostly, but we're going to go ahead and assume that we're getting a bunch of new followers and uh, <clears throat> introduce ourselves. <clears throat> Why do you have to clear your throat every it was, time? It just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Um, so, oh. my name is Seth Worthen. I am married to Jen, and we are the parents of... Sister Naya. Don't say sister. Why not? I'm not your sister. Dang. Right. Daughter Naya. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so we'll just give you a little history here of how this whole thing came together. Me and Jen met when we were 11? I was 11. I think you were 12. Yeah, we met really young. She actually moved all the way from California. You, you. Right next door to me, literally, like right around the corner in the middle of the at country. Pond Ridge? Yeah. Where they're at now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Girl. her parents. You, still your there. parents have been there forever. That's they moved, literally where they moved to, and they have stayed there. They moved right there and was just there, and so uh, they started coming to the church. We met and we became best friends, and we were friends for a long time. For a very long time. We dated at fifteen, I think, <laughs> for two weeks. No, it was like two days. <laughs> and then we were like, we weren't allowed to date. It was just we thought it was cool, and then like we dated for two days, and then we were like do you want to go back to being friends? And we were like, yeah, let's do that. And then we we're like, if we we're meant to be together, we'll be together. And Dang. <laughs> long story short, she went to a different church for a little bit. We tried to talk to other people, but I think in the back of our, both of our minds, we were just like, this ain't going to do this trash. <laughs> <laughs> and then she came back and here we are. That's crazy. We got was. married when we were 20. I think. We dated for like two years. Yeah. So you guys got... We got started dating at like 18. She was 17. I was 18. Yeah. You guys got engaged at 20? No, we got engaged and when I was 19. We got engaged when she was 19, got married when we were 20. Then we had our first son, Avery, at 21. Yeah, I was 21. You were 20, technically. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Because... And then um, we had Agnes. When I feel we like those like, dates don't add up, though. Well, I just feel like having, like, I used to always think when I was younger, like, people getting married at 20, I was like, oh. And now that I'm actually, like, 21, I'm like, that's literally crazy. You're it, still a baby. Yeah, you're still literally, a Literally, yeah. And you really don't know what you want. <laughs> we knew we wanted each other because, like, we literally, since we were kids, I think it was. Yeah, but I feel like that's a very privileged thing. Like, that doesn't always happen it's like, not where you com- grow yeah. up with somebody. It's not the common thing to happen. But um, then we had Agnes. Actually, you came into our life before Agnes. So after Avery. Um, I think Avery was, like, almost one. Almost one. And Naya got kicked out of her house for being a thotty. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm totally playing. I'm totally playing. Actually, I'll let you take over here. And tell your oh, part. I don't even. Uh, her daddy never wanted her. She my dad was. I don't know who my dad is to this day. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mom passed away when I was 14. And from then. Wait, how did she pass? She had a stroke. Dang. And she was in a coma for like two months. And then she passed away like a random Wednesday. And then, uh, yeah, so I was like 14. And then after that, we just lived with a bunch of different people, me you and my did. sister. Weren't you like and, a homeless shelter for a while? Yeah, we lived in a homeless shelter for like five months with our aunt. And then we got an apartment with our aunt and found out some stuff was going on then, behind our backs mm-hmm. and so then she got upset with us and kicked us out we went and lived with one of our friends moms and then after that we moved in with jen and seth yeah so they moved in with us uh for about a year i think it was and then um her older sister turned 18 and they were able to find an apartment and move out and that was that was awesome that was the goal the whole time but then This one just has found her way back (laughs) multiple times. Life is hard out here, y'all. Life is hard. Um, (laughs) And so, yeah, here we are. So um, We a family. 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 Then we had Agnes, and then we had Silas. Silas was a surprise. We thought we were done with two. Um, 
and we weren't. And then this one came back. And so now we have four. four. <laughs> Jeez, low waist. Oh gosh. So, yeah, that's kind of how the family got started. Um, and then, so, let's, I guess let's say, like, what we do. I am a full-time uh, music director at my church. I have been doing that for full time for like three years i think so yeah 2020 four no years. four years well it'll be four years, four years this october in october yeah um wow i know that's crazy time flies um so i've been doing that for four years full time but i've been doing it for like 13 years in complete at my church um <clears throat> dang there's a lot that that's comes crazy. with that that could be unpacked but that that in short that's what i do <laughs> my background was in like finance i was in uh working in banks and stuff like that but loki he'd been doing this stuff just not full time that's what I, yeah like i was literally working at the bank all day i would come home eat supper and then literally go to the church and start working on things especially on a church night on nights where there were practices and it was just, it was nonstop. It got to the point before I quit at the bank and went full time at the church. I was literally taking my laptop, my church laptop to the bank and I would set it up right beside my work computer and I would work on church stuff like in my downtime. And my boss was one of the best bosses ever and he was completely cool with that. But, um, he, he understood and I, I didn't like let my work slip, but just in my downtime I was working on church stuff and it was just, crazy and it got to that point and that's um that's that's where that took place jen what about you what do you do professionally so basically <laughs> <laughs> so basically i'm really good at being so that's why <laughs> um no i do work at the church part-time i clean i get the privilege of picking up dookies and <laughs> <laughs> it ain't even small. And, no, even and, small. and and vacuuming and keeping that place looking good. And I do I do mean that. It is a privilege, even though it's not the fanciest. It's not or, a pretty privilege. It's not a, pri- a pretty privilege. <laughs> serving, <laughs> serving isn't a pretty privilege. It never though. is, but um, I like it. I love to see. I just, I guess, I want to see these people's house so bad. <laughs> I want to see it so For bad. Real. Like I don't, because... I want to see their medical chart. Why you smell like that? <laughs> <laughs> That's not healthy. <laughs> yeah, so I do do that, and then I stay home with the kids, and I'm um, a victim of homeschooling, and a that's victim. going... <laughs> nah, God needs to come back. Um, yeah, and that's... Oh, we do teach college and career, which that's not really a paying job, but that is a title that I'm very, very proud and honored to have. Um my kids will probably be supporting us, listening, watching this. This July actually marks two years that we've had the college and yes, career. Yes, and I love college and career. When we first started off, you guys were a mess. Mm, I was a, I was Dear a God. part of like the first group, and we were all. It was terrible. God has done some me including <laughs> work, like He does. But yeah, that's 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 all I do. Uh, I I don't really know if I'm full time or part time. It just depends on the week. <laughs> uh, but I work at a restaurant. I work in back of house as a chef. Chef, chef and, Nayo. But she don't know, know how to cook at the house. <laughs> strange. It pays, but it's not something that I want to do forever. So yeah, and that's okay too. Like my first four jobs were not what I was passionate about, obviously. And I, I know that I'm super privileged to do what I do. Cause I, I talk to people who are in like, I guess, was that peers or no? Well, who, who's like at your level? Colleagues. I talk to colleagues all the time and they're like, well, if I uh, have time after my day job and I'm like, oh, you, like, like not a lot of people actually work full time ministry. And that's, it's a blessing. The, yeah. It's a blessing. The longer I'm in it, sometimes I'm like, dang, should I, should I go back and get a job? No, I'm just playing. I don't think I, you've oh, ever thought that. I, I would it. not. No, I have thought recently because uh, I've been in the trenches. I've thought like, <laughs> is this worth it? But it's just one of those dang. like, it's yeah. just one of those like fleeting things that come to your mind where you're like, dang, this sucks. But like, I didn't sign up for it for the glamour of it. Like, I truly have a burden and a passion for it. And uh, this is where I'm at, and until God calls me elsewhere, I'll be here. That's I, what I'm saying. I suppose. 
but hey. Oh well. Anyway. So Chef Naya. <clears throat> oh so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you don't know, I'm currently in pursuit of getting a bag from YouTube. <laughs> Dang. Um, so if you're new here, go ahead and click subscribe. Um, I'm really, really close to getting monetized, actually, and it's just I, I literally. You can go back. I will link my first video right here. Go back and watch. And in the first few seconds, I'm like, I guess I'm going to start a vlog. And I just started it on a whim, honestly. Because why not? Because why not? And that's what I said in there. I was like, the world is full of thousands of podcasts, thousands of vlogs, of people talking nonsense and everything. Somebody's like, going to listen. What's awesome. one more? Like, we need more apostolic voices. We need more apostolic creatives. We need more uh, people in the creative space just stepping out and being like sure i'll i'll do that it may be mid but you and know what hundreds of you are watching it apparently. here's the thing also like for me like my point of view is like working with college and career and like watching younger kids like it does matter what you're watching but also like i feel like the lifestyle that we live is very like as a young person like i feel like when you think of all the things and God and calling and ministries and all, it just seems so unattainable. So to see somebody live it out in front of you, my pastor says this beautiful thing where like you raise your kid by example, example, example. Like if you don't put yourself out there for these kids to see the example, like you miss your opportunity to probably, and what if we just win one? It doesn't matter. One is worth it. So yeah. like literally like, having content out there that kids like this that's clean and wow you can't help yourself that's clean <laughs> and somewhat entertaining and um clean and clean and well and that's the thing too we see a lot of like working in college and career around that age i see a lot of kids struggle with the want to live for god because no shade, but shade. I see a lot of parents not make living for God look fun, not look attainable, for real. not look uh, like a lifestyle that you would want to keep up with. And so for young people, they're looking at content 24-7 yeah. and they literally see all the thrills of the world like i'm gonna go ahead and show them like hey like this is a life worth living this is this is it's fun to have one family under one roof with one mom and dad and and i understand there's situations that you can't help and to those people like there's no judgment i'm just saying like this is a life worth living and working for god is a is is a job worth doing and i, I want i want yeah, people to and know it's, that it's it's worth it so yeah when seth told me like a year ago or yeah, it was last February, right? Yeah, I just like passed my one year. That's so crazy. When you told me, I was like, dude, as long as you're having fun and as long as it doesn't like mentally bog you down, because like Seth is an anxiety survivor. My God, we'll get to that. Represent. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, Social media wrecks oh. him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I told him, I was like, as long as it doesn't affect you like in a negative way, like have fun, do whatever, like, and be yourself, like. Someone is bound to like the truest version of you. I think I've learned that a lot too over the last year. Um, how do I put this nicely? I'm hated. Um, <laughs> I got haters. <laughs> I got haters for real. Um, all of you out there watching me and, and supporting me and liking me. I appreciate y'all. I really do because uh, I don't have a lot of people that like me. At least not here. This is what I'm saying. Here is like, and I think it's a it's a curse of ministry that just happens. Uh, you're never going to be liked all the way. Like even my pastor, as as loved as he is, and as much as people um, support him, and they're like, "Oh, he's that man!" Like, and he has a lot of respect. He gets as much hate, and a lot of times it's behind closed doors. But um, leadership, you're you're being pushed up on a pedestal, and you are serving people. It, it's a it's it's one of the most peculiar positions because like you're all the way up there for everyone to see you and you're working in the low lowliest places and it's lonely. A lot of times you get a lot of hate. You make a decision based on all the information that you have coming in the best decision you can possibly make within reason and within the wisdom that God gives you. 
and you make that decision and then half of the people are like well i don't know why you did that that was dumb Hate and that. you yeah. get hate for it and it's like you don't even have all the facts like you don't even know but why. everybody wants to be on that pedestal that's but they I'm don't saying. know they about don't. the lowly part of that's it. what i'm saying then, mm-hmm. you yeah. know yeah so everybody wants whatever shines you know like everybody's looking for the but they don't see the scrubbing of the toilets or the cleaning out the 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 music room remember that junk or or like i don't know if you watched seth's one of his latest vlogs like being under the platform like nobody sees that everybody just sees the or literally just like being there for hours on end and making sure like and like even i didn't realize it until like i was around seth so much but like for instance, like we just had Easter and there's a lot that goes behind it. It's not oh, just like, what like like imagine just showing up at church and like sitting and enjoying the service. Hmm. Like a lot more goes into yeah. even just a regular service than someone that. told me Sunday they were like <laughs> they were like I I was walking out early and they were like, Wow, is it so nice to get to leave early on a Sunday? Okay, for context, this past Sunday was like a big kids thing, which I play a very, very small part in and like production side, but not much at all really. And so I got there late and I left early, which is not a normal Sunday. I think we woke up at what, nine? Yeah. We woke up at nine on Sunday. We were like, This is crazy. And we went to church. We just kind of showed up, did our little part, and then left after. That was so and nice. they were like, I, uh, you're probably loving today, but I hate today because it's making me think that you do this every Sunday. And I was like, I do. See ya. <laughs> and I walked out. I was like, it was so nice. Um, today actually feels almost like a vacation because it's like two days in a row. Literally, I feel like we've been off. For- <clears throat> it's so nice. But yeah, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of thankless work. Um, it so really is. Coming, it just goes unnoticed. Coming yeah. back to my original thought, all of you supporting me and then like when i see you guys at conferences or wherever if you happen to pop up and you're like oh my gosh i love the vlog and your family and you're yeah, so that's crazy <laughs> it's it's a breath of fresh air no, for and real. it's also a breath of weird air because it's like you, you like me <laughs> yeah. i just told seth earlier uh i don't know your last name but elizabeth um she always is liking my stories and i went back and was watching one of Seth's vlogs and she commented on it and I was like, that's the same girl. Aww. And then I went to my stories and I saw which ones she likes and she usually likes either the ones of Noah or the ones of Seth and Jen and their kids. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. That is so cool. We, I was at a conference last year and I was just talking to someone and someone was like, um, well, your wife has that. And I was like, oh, you know my wife? And she was like, <laughs> No, I just watch your vlog. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's so weird. Remember when we were stopped by that cute little girl? Yeah. <clears throat> At Summit. It yeah. Was, Summit it's was surreal. Weird. It was. It, it's really weird. Um, but, but it's cool. Yeah. It's weird because it's like, you don't know me. But, but then yeah. you think like, oh, they're watching the vlogs. And I'm like, that's cool. It's also made me think of like how much I put personal information inside the vlogs like over mm-hmm. the year i think when i started i was just saying anything and everything like really i was just like whatever no one's watching this and then because one thing about Seth, man he can talk <laughs> <laughs> and then meeting people and like realizing oh people are actually watching this like i you may have noticed over the last year like i've been a little more reserved in like how much i share of my life um because there are a lot of people watching and i didn't realize that but which is cool that's the goal but um yeah anyway um, so this all kind of leads into what we do as a team at the church, and that is media. And so, whoop, 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 scum tea. <laughs> scum tea. <laughs> so a lot of people have heard us call ourselves the scum team, and that's basically the name. Well, which by the way, our media team is way bigger than just us now. Yeah, yeah it is. And, um, <clears throat> we also have a group chat, a family group chat with scum the name team. scum team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, for context, we were just saying this is a thankless job. It is also a highly criticized job because, well, like going back to pastor, like you make a decision, you do all these things with all the information that you understand and you know, and then people don't like it. People who know nothing about anything literally make comments on the decisions you made with knowledge like i understand algorithms i understand posting schedules i understand all this stuff and you don't even know how to open the photoshop program 
and you want to walk in and criticize it. So Dang. <laughs> there was someone who had a lot to say in the press about me. <laughs> For context, I don't even know the and whole you story and we of, won't. of You will what? not share who so, that was, but someone just had, funny. had a lot to say about our social media skills. And I think, oh, first of all, I think this is so funny. Me and Jen are not even on social media, um, which is hilarious to me because, like, we run the media. I think, I think it became a point. Like, there's a lot of reasons, and I'm not going to get into them all for me personally. But I think there's a point of like when I can look at, I can look at a posting schedule and be like, we need to say these keywords, and it needs to be focused on this because they will just eat it up. Something like that clicked in my mind, and I'm like. I ain't going to be one of the rats eating it up. Like that's a big part of it for me. Like if I understand it to such a science of this is what will perform well, this is what people will click on. Here's why they will click on it because the brain works this way. It's almost like once you, <laughs> once you've seen sausage being made, Dang. you don't want to eat sausage anymore. Cause it's like, I know how that's made. I, I feel like that's a big part of it for me for social media. And there's other parts too, like actual spiritual ones that I, I just stay away from personally and like mental health and all that. Like it's extremely toxic. Um, oh, so this is coming. Hi. Hi. We have a guest on the, <laughs> on the podcast already. I'm sorry if you it's hear okay. my kids, we do live we here. We have, Kids we do live, live here. here. We yeah, do. It's okay. We do. So anyway, someone had a lot to say. Oh yes. And the bulky. funny thing was, the funny thing was, is all this criticism came in in the midst of a moment of, I guess, elevation. Like we were asked to run media at a conference um, because our skills were recognized, and they were like, no. "Oh, to be fair, let's be honest. <laughs> like, let's be for real, for real." <laughs> Our media should be way ahead than what it is right now. It always yeah. should. It should. It, it should. Um, honestly, if I were only committed to that, maybe it could be. If all of us only focused on media, uh, maybe it would be. But it's not. And so, um, back to the point, we were asked to run media at an event. And someone was basically said, like, wow, wish y'all would run it here. And I was just like... Okay. So uh, me, I told Jen and we like cried about it and laughed about it and whatever. But then we were just like, we're scum. And then we told Naya, we didn't tell him who said it. We were just like, we're being criticized. And so we were like, scum team. Okay. <laughs> but like, I know that that sounds extremely, extremely petty. And like one thing about me and maybe in the future we'll get into it and just like, hopefully just get some whatever. But Bitterness is not for me. Like, I've been bitter before, and that's too heavy for me to carry. So, like, when this comment was brought up, I was deeply hurt because nobody knew the amount of work that we have put into it. And last year specifically was a very, very hard year. Like, if you... Hi. Like, if you would have told me, like, hey pack up your bags and leave, I wouldn't have even packed. I would have left everything behind and I would have left this joker. So it was a really hard, hard, hard year. And I feel like everybody was doing the best that they could. And I mean, when I tried, we say now that our media team is bigger and thank God for it. But back then when I, I remember I asked two specific people if they would be willing, because I do sing and our music department was just a hot mess last year. I have three kids. I asked two specific people to help me out doing photography because at the time I was the one doing it. I asked them because I, I just asked them. I needed help. And they just looked at me and said, yeah, sure. And then when I would text them, they would be like, sorry, I can't do that tonight. And, but the person that made this, they, they didn't know that, that I had been, they didn't know. And it was just so frustrating to me to hear that statement because like first they didn't know that I had tried to ask people, but because people were upset with me for whatever reason. But also even more context, the comment wasn't even made towards Jen. It was made towards me. And what this person didn't know is that I had kind of, while I'm the director of media, all things media, like I, I try to build and grow people. I had stepped back and been like, Jen, why don't you try to 
um, take over our social media presence. And I had kind of handed that off to her for a little bit. And like, to be fair, before last year, I thought I did it, not, not to toot my own horn, but I thought I was doing fantastic. Last year, the last thing I wanted to waste my time was on social media. I did not want to be up there, be on there and like, see who's doing what, where they're going, what color their hair is. Like I, I did not care. So yeah, I checked out of social media and I do not apologize for that. But like to hear that comment, it was just like, and then everything that we do, like we do serve, we serve with our three young kids with us. Like, mm-hmm. and Naya thankfully can take care of herself and she does help us out quite a bit. But like everything that I do, not not only do I clean the church, not only do I help Seth with whatever he's doing, which is typically quite a lot I don't have the brains for that (laughs) but like I help in like petty things like picking up here or running here and doing this I do that with my three kids because I had kids to enjoy kids so yeah that comment just kind of kids in and of themselves are a ministry yeah Yeah, they are Uh, props to all my kids ministry people out there I couldn't do it (laughs) I need breaks for my own kids what time is it no Coca anyway, <laughs> so we lovingly adopted the name Scum Team. We ran that conference. We embraced it. Yes. We ran that conference on no sleep. Because <laughs> also, the funny thing was, is I was, I was already on the music team at this conference. Uh, so some of the higher ups reached out to me and was like, would you do media? And I was like, I think with my, my team, that's something I could handle because I wouldn't be shooting anything um, I would be able to serve during the service. They could shoot the service, and then immediately following the service, we could go in, edit, post content. I was like, it shouldn't be a problem at all. <laughs> we shot th- that conference, Naya, with three kids because our kids oh, did not want to stay. But yeah. then, to top it all off, <laughs> my good friend Ryan Jeans I'm beautiful got man. pneumonia <laughs> the week of the conference, and which. Like, I understand, like, I was probably the next capable one in the music group to do his job. He's just like, can you do it? I'm not going to be able to be there. And I was like, oh, no, first it was, can you take care of all the rehearsals? I'm going to be late getting there because I had pneumonia and I'm recovering. And I was like, absolutely, I can do that. Mm -mm. Did that. Um, And then he's like, I'm not coming. (laughs) (laughs) And so I uh, just fell to me, like, all of the music and... Not to uh, pat myself on the back, but I'm the type of person that prepares to the point where, like, if that were to happen, I got it. <clears throat> and so I did have it. And it just put an immense load of stress on me because I still also had the media. So we were doing rehearsals. They were shooting. We were getting out, rushing to our Airbnb, <laughs> which was, like, 25 minutes away, and we didn't realize. So there was that <laughs> wasted time. Um, like in the mountains and we had to drive up these crazy hills. We'd get food, run home and we would start pouring through the footage from that night. Um, creating reels out of nothing sometimes. Hey, at midnight I clocked out. (laughs) Jen, okay, let me say me and Naya because Jen was in bed fast asleep. (laughs) I would stay up till like one or two getting that edited, posted as fast as possible. I mean, and no shade to anybody, but some of those were really hard to shoot and get footage out of because some is just different it's a different it is it is is. but we did it and the whole time in the back of my head i'm just hearing like why do i have to do and get you to do that here and i'm like (laughs) (laughs) scum (laughs) and we pulled it off you know what and we're already invited back for the next year so i can't wait to go i can't wait i can't but hey even though that was a lot it was still better than being here at the time. And oh, yeah. We had so much fun. <laughs> Go, oh, I'll oh. link those vlogs right here. Okay. That was crazy. <laughs> on our way back, it, we had so much fun, even though like it was a little bit of a... I mean, you have two options in life. You can sit there and cry about it, or you can move on. I Sometimes just feel I like cry. if you genuinely <laughs> enjoy doing stuff like that, though, it's never too bad. Yeah. Like... And that's that's honestly the way I'm with all ministry is like like Jen will get stressed sometimes. Oh no, like, I don't do stress. <laughs> I don't do stress well. And I'm just like And I get stressed quick. This is part of it. Like I'm fine with it. Like Oh, oh, oh. Since this is our first episode, Enneagram, I'm a type one. I'm a oh. I take it like three times and it's changed. The last time I took it I was a type two, but you I don't be lying. 
<laughs> the first time I took it, I was a type four, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, Seth. I'm a three through and through. I've taken it like eight times. Me too. I'm a, I'm a one every time. Anyway, if you um, are interested in that, go take the test. Let us know what you are. Yeah. I forgot about that. Anyway, so if yeah. If you take the test, go ahead and comment down below what you are. That way we can find our groups. The funny thing is, is I don't like a single three that I know. <sighs> Seth, you don't like Noah. anybody. Oh, I'm, just I'm just fine. I'm just fine. Dang, dang. Okay, I'm going to take it back. I don't like a lot of threes that I meet, and I'm just like... Dude. You like Noah, and you like Isaac. You do like Isaac. I do like Isaac. I'm going to stop naming names, because then when people don't hear their name, they're going to get offended. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that pretty much wraps up who we are. Oh, no, no, no. I was saying, I was saying about <laughs> Summit. So, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a very fun week, but we were stressed all that... We did not want to come home. Oh, yeah. We yeah, no. ended up, like, literally, <laughs> it was like, we were on our way home, and, and I was just like, please, I will sleep in this <laughs> truck as long as you guys don't take me back home. I was ready to sleep in the truck, too. And, and I knew that they felt the same. That's yes, why I said it. We were all just like, oh. Like, you know in cartoons where, like, uh, a character will, like, put his heels in the dirt? <laughs> and they're getting, and <laughs> That was literally us. <laughs> so I told Seth, I was like, hey, I found this room. Why don't you go ahead and book it? Well, Bubba goes ahead and books it for the next week. And I was like, no, no, no. To be fair, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me share my story. Here we go. She Here handed we go. me the phone and said, I found this place. Book it. She handed it to me without having selected dates. I just assumed she had selected dates. So it wasn't my fault. It wasn't her fault. It was both of our fault. I, I, I should have verified. I think we were just desperate. We to... literally just didn't want to go home. So anyway, we finally, we call... We call places because we couldn't... No, because then on top of it, when I called them to see if they had a room available for that night... They said they that... They said room. that room that you booked doesn't even exist. Uh, and it was supposed to be non-refundable, but they refunded us because they were like, we don't even have that room that you booked. So anyway, we find a place. And it is the most moistest <laughs> place. What? And it wasn't even like ghetto or anything. It have was you ever just... walked into a room after someone took a shower and there's no vent? And like everything's covered in a layer of dampness, like muggy. That's what that room Literally. felt like. But guess what? I did not. And care. we all we loved it. We all <laughs> were just giggling in our bed. We went to the most ghetto Walmart that you can ever imagine to get pajamas. The lights weren't working. The in lights there. were tweaking. There it was, was some crazy ghetto folks up in there. In that Walmart, but hey, we got our we pajamas. Hey, we didn't care. We didn't come home. We didn't, we come, didn't home. come home. <laughs> and we had crumble cookie, and we were content. Exactly. We really were. In our exactly. Damn hotel. Exactly. That's- we literally, it was an hour and forty minutes from home, mm-hmm. and we we were like, we've come as far as we can go. Yeah. <laughs> that was just like I don't know what it was about that trip. I don't know if it was just because I just didn't want to be here or what, but like I just did not want to leave, I and know. I had so much fun. Yeah, it was, it was a blast. Anyway, so now you know. Welcome to the team. Scum team. Scummies. Scum scum. If you like this podcast, go ahead, stick around, like, comment, subscribe, comment your Enneagram type if you have it, and then um, let us know what you want to hear about in the future. We're going to plan on having some guests and some Let's fun stuff. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Let's do yeah. it. Scammy. Scum, scum. Scum team. <laughs>